Hey everyone, welcome back. Look what I brought home. <laughs> what a catch. Uh, look, uh, we're back together, sort of folks. We'll be back in our, we can't really call it a studio, Greg, but no. we'll be back where we, uh, where we usually shoot the next week or two, but it's good to catch up with you, mate, and have a beer um, together. Uh, anyway, Greg, a big, it's been a big week of uh, footy in a lot of ways. Let's jump straight into it. The, the thing that's probably getting more press than anything else, oh. unfortunately, at the moment is the Broncos dilemma and, uh, and Anthony Seabold. Yes, yeah, Seabold. You know, is he the right man? That's the question. Is he the right man going forward? He's still got three and a half years from his contract to go with the Broncos there. But there's a lot of rumblings. He's starting to drop some of the older blokes. Corey Oates, he's, he's, he's toed and froed with a few players. I personally don't think he's the right man for the job. That's my opinion. He only had one year as a head coach at South Sydney, and then he's taken on the biggest role in the whole of the NRL as far as coaching is concerned, the Brisbane Broncos. I just don't think he's the right man. Yourself? Look, I think history's telling us that at the moment. They, they limped into the finals last year and got smashed. If it, I think this is the defining, this, this is his Waterloo this week. If he goes out there and, and they, they get dismantled like they did against you know, the, the Titans, who I know well beaters themselves at the moment, I think they'll, that'll, he'll have a tap on the shoulder. There's been interesting this talk that Stephen Kearney to come and be an assistant. He's been there before. Kevin Walters. Look, he's on a, he's on a lot of money, and, and I'm not sure if having a heap of extra um, chefs in the kitchen is going to do it. You don't need a cast bigger than Ben Hur. He's got to get the job done. You'll pay the big dollars to be the coach. And I just don't think he's the right man. That's my opinion. All right, the next one, Greg, you wanted to talk about, there's been a few changes, obviously, with the Victorian. Yeah, with the moment. restrictions, it's, it's very much affecting AFL, but from an NRL perspective, obviously, the Victorian restrictions only affects the Melbourne Storm. I personally think, you know, the way Cameron Smith was talking about it and saying, you know, if they were locked in a bubble and they couldn't go back to Victoria and all that, that he didn't want to play. I think that'll have a bit of an effect on the rest of the squad if that happens, and it looks like it's going to happen, that they won't be playing there for a period of time. And uh, my thoughts are that the, the, the lockout from Victoria will have an effect on the Melbourne Storm going forward. Yourself? Well, they haven't been the Melbourne Storm, that, that, that fortress down there, have they? They haven't been the unbeatable Melbourne Storm, and, and for probably a fair few good reasons. You know, some of the great stars have moved on, some of them are getting a bit wrong in the tooth injuries as well. This will be a really, this will be their, their big, Big test, I guess, yeah. um, how they handle this. There's been lots of talk about New Zealand. I think they've done reasonably well. I think it was mentioned that Kearney was probably a bit unlucky to be, be sacked. Yeah. Uh, for a few of those guys, especially the older heads, like you mentioned, Cameron Smith, the guys who've got families, this is going to be an extra added pressure, particularly if they're not going as well as they'd like. Especially with Cameron Munster out, um, you know, probably their go-to man. Agreed. The other one, mate, talked about Cameron Munster injuries. Uh, look, yeah. Every year, they, they seem to be coming more and more um, pronounced to what they were previous years. Players are getting bigger, stronger, faster. Mm. Yeah, well, you've got, um, obviously, as you said, Cameron Munster's out for a few weeks. The Roosters lost, you know, two players for the season. Yep. Uh, Victor Radley, obviously, being a starting player, and Verrill's off the bench, you know, Sam Verrill's off the bench. Two big, big losses for a whole season at test your depth, especially when they're not playing the reserve grade games now. No. So you've got blokes who haven't played for five, six, maybe the whole season. So, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And Mitchell Moses, obviously, as well, um, out of Parramatta. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We, I think we did, a, um, we did an article this week and we looked at the talent that's sitting on the bench at the moment. Mm. I don't know how many Good side. tens of millions of dollars that would be worth. Uh, not, not much you can do about it. And like, but like you said, the, it's really pronounced now because of there's no, there's no football month that the other guys yeah. can play. I think some of the clubs are, are having sort of uh, scrimmage matches and yeah. just having a bit of a run around, but it's not the same as no. a week-to-week uh, cup like the Interest Cup. Yeah, it came out with Tommy too. You know, you look at Manly when they lost Tommy to Boyd. Bitch, and Dylan Walker. Dylan Walker. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at the rounds ahead of us. Uh, look, we start off with a beauty, don't we? We just mentioned Cameron, uh, Cameron Munster's out for the Storm and, uh, and the Roosters have got two, two of their guns too for season-ending injuries for the Roosters. Mm. Uh, how do you see this one, mate? This is our Thursday night game. This is up in Brizzy, up in the sun called Yeah. Um, what do you reckon? Munster's a bigger out for me than, than you know, nothing against Radley or Beryl, so I just think Munster being out's huge for the Storm. They don't have as much depth as the Roosters. The Roosters have got 55 players to pick from, and the rest, I, I'm all over the Roosters in this one. I think they'll win yourself. Yeah, I am too. I, I, I think um, 
it's going to be a bridge too far. I see that Riley Jackson's in for Cameron Munster, a good player in his own right, but he's not Cameron he's Munster. Not Cameron I think that the Roosters can absorb those type of injuries better. They bring in Matt Butcher mm. and Isaac Liu um, and Mitch Alderson. They've got blokes who can just yeah. jump and do the job. And Ryan Hall doesn't even get a start again this weekend in English International. Yeah, yeah, they're going all right at the moment. Look, Friday night, the um, the Raiders against your mob, the, the Dragons, Greggy. This is going to be a, uh, a really interesting match. The Raiders aren't, we talked about Melbourne, aren't where they want to be. Raiders, if they were, as we mentioned last week, they're probably a team on the slide at the moment. Mm. I'm not suggesting that's where it's going to end, but they're certainly, they're not where they want to be. There's been big talk about Bateman. He said he's moving on. Uh, Kurt, yeah. Yeah. Scott, it hasn't been a happy marriage. Well, he's off the bench now, Curtis. Scott's yeah. number 14. It's weird having a centre on the bench. What do you reckon? Dragons for two. Mate, I'm, I'm, that's my smoky of the week. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping. I'm, I'm, well, actually, I'm jumping on them as well. I think that the, the time is right. If you are going to beat them, this is it. Yeah. Look, in saying that, I'm not going to go and have $10 each way. If the Raiders started to click, they could put a score on. But I'm taking the Dragons this week. They've, they've been a bit better than what they were you know, a month ago. The next game, Greggy, should be an interesting one. Yeah, the Eels versus the Cowboys. Three dollars twenty in on, on the bookies markets for the Cowboys. They played all right on the weekend. If they can just put two together, they're a chance here. Moses out for the Eels mm. is gigantic. Yep, it's gigantic. I still think the Eels will win. I just think that they're really toughened and hardened this year. I think the Eels win by about four. Yeah, so, I'm taking the Eels too. I was really impressed by the Cowboys' effort last week. I watched that one closely. Valentine Holmes has been named an extended bench. Well, be players, yeah. it'll be interesting. Look, it's going to be interesting that back lines all together because I'm, I'm of the opinion still that he's a fantastic player wherever he plays. But I think that Greenwater, when Morgan comes back, Morgan's going to play in the halves. I don't think he can drop Clifford. I don't know. I think I'd be thinking Holmes. I know there's been a fortune on him for the time being on the wing, and yeah. he could maybe alternate the Greenwater. But look, long, that was a long answer. I'm going to you with quite that same, mate. I think the Titans were impressive last week against a, a pretty ordinary Broncos. Um, they're playing the Sharks this week. Yeah. What do you reckon? The tough, this is a really tough one. They've had, over, historically, in the last few years, they've had really tight games, haven't they? These yeah, teams. and Ash Taylor's had blinders every year against, um, every game against the, the Sharks for some reason. He scored tries, he set up tries. I still, I'm keen on the Sharks. I think the Sharks might get a little roll in the next couple of weeks, unfortunately. Because um, I don't like them. But I, I'm going the Sharks myself. Yeah, look, I am. But again, I think this is going to be, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, uh, they're on the they're on the rise, the Titans. So they're, they're going to probably have um, get a couple of kicks in the pants as the season goes along. But I don't think they're going to finish last. Yeah. They've shown a bit of Holbrook's made his he's drawing a line in the sand, hasn't he? He's not going to cop any garbage. He's not afraid to drop an international or a state play when they don't have many. I'm th- I'm thinking the Sharks probably by about six to ten points. Yep. In a pretty tight one. The Warriors and the Broncos. Warriors two dollars sixty nine, the Broncos a dollar forty seven. Really, the way they're playing, they don't deserve to be favourites again against anyone at the moment. I'm not jumping on the bash the Broncos bandwagon, but gee whiz, they 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 just look like they've all met in a pub, and they're saying, look, I'll play hooker, I'll have a go at front row. My name's so and so. They just look like they've never played together or met, met each other before. What do you reckon? The only other coach that drops wingers continuously is Paul Rubin, and how's that work for the Dragons? But now lost five in a row. I think they'll win. Um, I don't think it'd be much, but I'm pretty convinced that the Red Hill, they had an optional training on Monday and they all turned up. They're at least going to give everything they got and I think they'll win. I think Broncos tip by 10. Well, this is the first one. I'm taking the Warriors here. I think that they, 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 were, they were pretty ordinary against Melbourne. Melbourne were pretty strong last week, saying that they were 50 to 6. I can't tip the Broncos the way they're going at the moment. The, the Titans beat them really convincingly, 30 to 12. Hmm. Um, I think the Warriors are going to get another win this week. Yeah. Oof, the Tigers and the Panthers, the two creatures of the jungle. Haven't they been good? Both They've been. both been good. This is, to me, the game of the round to watch. Um, I'm, I'm going the Panthers. I think they'll continue on their victories that they've had lately. I think they're, they're strong. Cleary's just improving out of sight for me. But I think the Tigers will fight hard, and I'm going Panthers by four. Yeah, I'm about the same, mate. I'm really, really impressed with Harry Grant. What a good boy he's been. I know I mention him just about every week, but I'm thinking the Panthers are about the same. Uh, the Manly, they came, as we mentioned earlier, they came sort of cr- crashing back to earth with the Seagulls against Cronulla last week. Cronulla were pretty good, mm-hmm. uh, but they really do miss Travoy, which don't know he's here. And in the last few years, they've missed him when he's been out. He's had a few injuries. The Knights, they'll be looking to bounce back. Both sides were, you know, had a score put on them that they weren't expecting, I guess, Knights against the Cowboys. 
Bringing on taking the Knights here, I think that they're going to, they don't have as many cattle out that are important to them as, as the Seagulls with Will and Walker and the Boilers. Well, we have to have a difference, and this is the difference. I just think that Desi and his side don't play two bad games in a row, and I'm going for the Seagulls. All right, no worries. The next game, the last game of, of, the, of the round, the Bulldogs play a lot of Sunday football. They do, don't they? Uh, up against the Rabbitohs. Uh, what do you reckon, Ian? Oh, the Rabbitohs. Bulldogs are boring. Mm. I actually love watching rugby league, and nothing against the Bulldogs, but there's just nothing happening there. They, they keep changing their halves. They just try hard, but they're not up to it. They got beaten 34 to 6 by the Tigers. Yeah, the Rabbitohs are easy. Look, Luke Thompson looks like he's going to play his first game with the Pommie International. He's named number, number 20. Yeah, I don't think he'd do much this week, but long term, yeah, great. He's good, doesn't he? Yeah. He's seen that training regime he's done oh, on social yeah, media. Same as mine. <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, I'm taking the Rapidos too. I think the Rap- this is, uh, if the Rapidos don't win this one, you know, they are not serious top eight contenders. Look, that's about our tips. I know we're racing the clock, Reggie. But just really quickly, what's your locker? What's your Bentley towels? You know, the, the super absorbent, lightweight towels that are brought to us by Bentley's. What's your Bentley's towels lock of the week? My Bentley's towels lock of the week. Reggie, I'm, mine, is, mine is the Roosters. I just simply can't go past them. Um, I'm going the Rabbitohs. It's my lock of the week. What about your Bentley towels smoky of the week? A smoky? I'm going the Cowboys. After last week, I, um, I think they might be able to on the back of, on the back of Moses being um, on the back of Moses being out. I think they'll take advantage of that. You? Yeah, I'm going to go manly. That's my smoke. I know it's only two dollars oh five, but they're outsiders, so they're my smoke either way. Right. And that's good timing. My wife just walked in, so she's going to run over and probably get us a beer and something to eat. <laughs> in the meantime, folks, so we hope <laughs> your wife does exactly the same. Thanks for joining us at Two Good Sports. Kick. Come on, Greggy. Kick to the corner. <laughs>